about it. We don't want to keep on doing it. Can you get your email at that point? What kind of company? She told me in person. Generally, yeah, she yeah, said like that. that. So, so okay. yeah. I don't, was I? I don't even know what else yeah. she was supposed to do. Okay. Okay, Doug, you have to well, it's 11.01. We've got some people on Zoom. We've got RJ in the room with Madison. Hi, guys. Hi. All right. So if you caught the last one that we did in March, um, we're going to ask these lovely agents some questions, and they are going to answer honestly and to the best of their ability. Um, so do you want to face them? <laughs> well, they couldn't see me because... Yeah. This big head was in my way. Yes. <laughs> I took a picture of the top of my head today. You should try it sometime. Okay. It really gives you a good perspective of yep. where your brain is like. Okay. <laughs> so the fact you did that gives me a perspective of what your brain is like. <laughs> yeah. So we're calling this a top producer panel um, because we do have bold coming up next month. Um, well, I just want to let you know that Mac and I are going to be the most entertaining people that you had on this panel just before we get started. So okay. Glad to know it um, because we have bold okay. coming up next month. Um, we are going to ask some questions specifically about bold, but also about your guys' experience in real estate. So my first question is, how did you get started in real estate? Hey, who goes first? You do. Anybody that hey, wants wait, to go hey, first. Age before beauty. Perfect. I didn't realize I was older than Max. <laughs> are and you? That's how old are you, Frazier? I'm 43. Hey, this is, <laughs> this is, and his nose is growing. You all notice? I'll be 51 in August. Okay, he is older than I. All right, so um Rachel's older than that. Yeah. So, anyways, my mom has really good genetics. Okay. And I have fillers. <laughs> so I was uh, off. So, yeah. So, so we so how I got started in real estate, guys. Um, great to see you, Matt. Um, is that I was selling cars at Burgle and Luxury. Um, I was their top salesman. That's one of your car leads. And uh I was um I was selling cars like a salesperson, salesperson, and I was um, I was working a lot of hours, and I was I was having to shuffle. I mean, like crazy situations. Like, and my wife looked at me and she said, "You should get your real estate license." So you did. So, and so, you did. And so I, with many struggles, I did. I I went and took the test. I took took the eight week course, and I. I uh, went took the test and I failed it and I cried and then I went back and waited a month or so I, and I was still cranking up cars in Brooklyn so it was a mask my success there was telling me hey you're good here you're getting a lot of attention here um you're their top guy so you know you don't need to worry too much about the real estate thing you messed up you couldn't pass it uh so I went back and failed it again and then I did not go back and do it again for another year. And people would tell me as I was selling cars, my old boss at Dale Carnegie was like, you'd make a really good realtor. And um, I uh, went back into the eight week course again, twice, and then I failed it again. And, I, and I, then I passed Virginia, which was, is that about, my, I passed National, which is the most questions. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, it was, it was a miracle. And then I failed it. Was a miracle. It was a miracle. But I knew if I could, I, I knew with all the people in the class, I could outsell all of them if I could just pass the test because they, they just didn't know. Most of them don't know how to sell. Um, but anyways, um, so then I, I failed again. And then the fifth time I passed uh, Virginia and I went back and studied. And so I can tell you all about that, but that's how I got into it. Okay, Matt. I was driving around in my patrol car. <laughs> Pretty much had enough of the law enforcement world. I had time in to retire, and I figured I needed to find something that was um, that dealt with people for sure, but not on the worst day of their life. What I find interesting is that you could have retired, right? Like you could just sit, kick back, and retire. I did. I had twenty years in the retirement system. Not all as a law enforcement officer, but most as a law enforcement officer. And uh, so I said, well. I had a friend who used to be my agent, Doug Trexel, and he said, oh, you got to do, you got you to try this real estate thing. So I did. So uh, I retired June four years ago, but prior to that June, it was in October of, prior to retire, I decided to take the license, take the test, 
take the class, take the, the test, which I passed. It didn't take me five times. But you knew you could sell because you had arrested so many people. No, I've never, I, I had never sold anything in my life other than on Facebook. But probably had to talk to a lot of people in their cars about different situations. Right. So Perfect. I know how to talk to people, but I never was in the sales world ever. So um, that November prior to retiring is when I joined Keller Williams and I was a part-time agent for that first year. And so, so, yeah, so now I still go in everybody's homes like I did as a police officer, Yeah. but this time it's not on the worst day of somebody's life. It's usually helping <laughs> somebody achieve one of the best days of their life. Worst day. Yeah. So. <laughs> so that brings me to a question that I have on this sheet is when, because you both clearly started in other careers. So when do you decide to stop being a part-time agent and just jump in head first or feet first or whatever? So thanks. I'm glad I get to go first. Um, so anyways, yeah, yeah. So, so anyways, I, um, I work for a company called Quick Fix Real Estate, you know, the company we buy houses and um, they're well known. They, they're, I was their first on the phone sales rep. And so I left the car business and I had my, my um, coworker in the car business went to work for them and they assigned contracts, they go into homes. And so I was their first on the phone rep. And I had just got my real estate license. I did not know what I was doing at all. I didn't know what a signing contract meant. I just knew that, hey, I'm trying to buy your house for 50% off. <laughs> in Charlotte, Raleigh, Richmond, and Florida. And I put homes under contract in all those areas. Didn't even know what I was doing. I was just calling people. Um, and then they, uh, once COVID hit, and I was, uh, and then they put me on the streets at Roanoke in Richmond. Uh, and then once COVID hit, they, demoted me to a transaction coordinator okay and then I and so I was like oh my god I, I was like I was like I, I can't make any money like this and my wife goes well you've got a few thousand in the bank Fraser she goes why don't you just go for it she goes I'll back you up so I sat down at my desk at my house I quit quick fix real estate and I sat down at my desk and I started calling everybody I sold cars to that's and I made the jump and I was really nervous but I remember that day. I remember the first deal. I remember the phone call. And um, it just was like that. And, people, I, I, and then I just started telling people, this is what I do. Wow. Boom, boom, boom. Nice. So that first year, because I didn't have to retire. You know, I had a secure job. Didn't pay great. But I had the things I needed to have. Uh, I wanted to jump right into the real estate thing. It was not a popular idea in my house to do that at all. Sometimes it's still not popular. Uh, Same here. So I decided I would, if I could save enough money, if I could save enough money from real estate transactions, and this was, this was all decided like in that December time frame. If I could save it, half of my law enforcement salary, in the bank after I had shoved some to the side for taxes, then I could make that transition. And uh, I listed two houses in that first January that made up half of my law enforcement salary just in January. Uh, so I decided I was just going to do it. So I did. And I got to my 20 years in June and left. And what really encouraged me to make the jump, like he said, is that right before I left Quick Fix during COVID, my wife asked me to sell her house to help me be the realtor on our house that I bought. So, which is that it doesn't happen every day with realtors is that I sold our personal house and bought our house. And when I saw how much money I made off of that, because at that time, Keller Williams let you buy a personal house without taking a cut. Um, and we still do, by the way. Yeah, which is a, kind of a big deal uh, to me. I mean, any kind of money, if, you know, above $100 is a lot to me, above 50, right? Um, and once I saw that I made like 12 grand, I made commission on my wife's house. Uh, and and when I made like $12,000. I, I could not believe it. And she was like, you need, you, she's like, you can, she was like, you can do this. And I was like, I was like, damn, you're damn straight. I can do it. But I was nervous. 
Um, so that brings me to my next question. So how quickly did your businesses grow? Because you guys kind of hit the ground running. So how quickly did you start to see a change in your business? So with my, my first, my, well, after I sold my wife's house, I felt like that was easy. The, the transaction wasn't easy and buying the house wasn't easy. But after I did that, um, I felt like those were kind of give me. Um, but once I, once I started, my first transaction was a piece of land. A lady that had bought at Aldi from me at uh, Berglund Luxury, her and her husband wanted a piece of land. Um, and so I would just, that's when it started right there. And then she gave me her son at, who wanted to buy a house with his girlfriend. Um, and then it just kind of started multiplying at that point. But it was the, I didn't really hit the ground and running until after my first year, but that first year, I started like generating income and it was just enough as I was making in the car business um, or, or a little bit less, just enough to cover like my bills um, and maybe go on a, like a small vacation. But I, I would just look at it as like every transaction I look at, I'm like, okay, well, this will cover me for six months. This will cover me for, but it took about a year and then it just it, it would it grew after that. Yeah. So for me, uh, it actually went through pretty quick. That first year, part time, half the year, half the year I was part time. I, I had thirty eight transactions, which is crazy yeah. to think about. We heard we heard on our bowl call the other day ninety two percent of the agents nationally ninety two percent yeah ninety two percent of the agents nationally. Sold four houses or less so far this year nationally, right? So so far this year, so I, I sold thirty eight that year, and it it just it really just blew my mind. And part of it was, uh, I think that's the next question that what contributed to. It. Okay, yeah. well, I'll just roll into that. Yeah. So part of it was timing on my part. I happened to be coming into the industry at a pretty good time in real estate. Uh, but timing, timing is only good if you take advantage of the timing. So the other side of that is I had um, a couple of people here at the market center that, that were pretty good with kind of not really coaching me, but putting bugs in my ear of, of little tips and tricks. And, uh, but at the, at the end of the day, it all involved reaching out on my social media and letting people know what I do for a living. Because I had a law enforcement community, I have a military community, um, and just friends, family, you know, all of that. So I hit that really, really hard. Social media is still probably my driving force for my business, my database, my social media. So, but yeah. So Frazier, what kind of factors, I mean, Mac touched on it, but what factors contributed to your success? Yes, yeah, so the same thing. The one, one thing I want to put into perspective here is that I feel like more people know Mac and I than, than the normal people at Run Oak. He ran for sheriff, right? So I was, you know, I, I was already on social media and people, a lot of people know who I am. Um, I was on the radio here in the early 2000s. So sometimes I, I thought that would really bring me a lot of success. It didn't, but <laughs> some people, they'll be like, oh man, I remember that name. But what happened, the two things that I did was the social media piece. And so I faked it until I made it. So I was like, hey, I'm inside of this house right here. I was like, I pushed it out every day that I was a realtor. I would make videos like I still do, you know, like on the fly. Um, I just, I was at the vet with my dogs just now and made a video with the dogs you know, that, and, and tied real estate into it. And so I just started pumping out videos, houses, me, this is what I do. And I didn't tell them I hadn't sold them, but two houses. I just faked it. I made, I made, and I made them like, Hey, I'm your choice. You call me. And then I was like, I'll figure out what to do after that happens. But the social media has played a massive piece of it. Like, because people are still on it. The people in my age demographic love Facebook. So they, they, they eat it up. That's true. And I mess them up with it. it. Yeah. It's a, sometimes you could say it's a necessary evil. I'm not a fan of Facebook from just a life perspective, but it's a must for a business. I, I agree with him too. You know, 100%. I agree with him 100%. Okay. So I'm going to kind of 
switch gears in a, a small way. Um, do you have any particular training programs like that we've put on at KW or that you've taken separately that have contributed to the success that you guys have found? Yeah, so when I started, actually it's pretty consistent. So when I started here, our calendar was uh, pretty full of training opportunities, just like it is today. And I was working a shift with law enforcement where I was off work at three, but I had several, a couple of days during the week off, every other weekend off, that kind of thing. I took 100% advantage of my time by attending whatever training was on that calendar because it's free. I didn't have to pay for it. I didn't have the money to pay for it. I was on a police salary. Uh, that was a huge contributor um, to mindset, really, and getting things going. Um, so that, and then I also attended Bold that first year, which was huge for me. Uh, with the family reunion that first year, which was huge for me. Uh, I just tried to take advantage of it. I didn't have the money to do it really at the time, but I didn't have the money to not do it either. I couldn't afford not to do it. Yeah. So I whipped out the credit card and it paid for itself, you know, pretty easily. But trying to wrap your head around that initially of what? $1,200 for what? Eight, 800 for what? Yeah. Yeah. And then the wife was like, you're doing what? So I'm like, yeah, I'm just doing it. So I did. So, yeah. Yeah. So those are contributing all those things yeah. that we continue to still have here. So um, Madison's making eyeballs at me right now because she's just enamored in how I get interviewed. Um, <clears throat> this is not my first time, but anyways. Uh, so I'm, I'm making eyeballs. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so anyways, um, the the tra the training. Here, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and just be, tell you that she's probably trying to figure out what hair gel you use. Yeah, it's a combination of native uh, conditioner, which is all natural, and then uh, um, I use Roundup. They use brown weed, <laughs> so they interact, so it doesn't kill the hair. So they work together, all organic plus uh, uh, like Agent Orange. Yeah. All so, right. anyways, well, me yesterday, but your hair would be better than mine, so I just I'm jealous. So, anyways, the train, the tr Mac came to my first open house and sat down with me and showed me how to do it, and that really like grabbed at my heart because uh, he was like. I was like, wait, this guy's coming here for free to my open house? He's like, no, you get him to sign in here. And I was like, okay. And I was like, all right, got it. All right, so then that, that's what I initiate with all my open houses. It's like all those sons of guns. Great to see you. Thanks for coming in. She put her check in there. Uh, so anyways, um, I that's what I, that I got that training to get them to sign in. You know, like, so I implemented that and then I tweaked it and made it better. But also, the, you know, there's there, there's training in here um, as well. And, um, you know, the bold training, right? Uh, so what you want me to say? But the producers in the back are saying bold. Um, <laughs> oh, you want me to talk about how awesome bold is? Okay. So I took bold the first time while I was working a full-time job with Quick Fix Real Estate. And I was watching bold on my computer and they gave me a t-shirt said I graduated. I was like, well, that's not really true because I didn't go in person. So what bold did teach me to do was uh, interact with my social media in a different way, which I, I hadn't been doing. Um, so it gave me some tips. And so I'm sure that electricity, because um, that comes from me into the social media that I learned in bold is probably, I, I wouldn't say probably has helped me increase my sales. Uh, plus, how I work with my spear and different people has helped. Uh, and also getting out of my comfort zone, um, you know, which I, I was taught at Dale Carnegie a lot. You know, I took the Dale Carnegie courses. But um, hey, did, did you do anything with Dale Carnegie? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Dale Carnegie graduate. So that's Warren Buffett. I was wondering. Uh, so, uh, but anyways, Bold and Keller Williams reminds me so much of Dale Carnegie, just the mindset. Yeah. And so, the bold has some of that those Dale Carnegie principles, which is the I'd say the most powerful course in in the world for coming out of your comfort zone. And when I, that's why I really like Keller Williams because it has. And if you, any of you want me to share the Dale Carnegie Golden Book with you, I will. Um, but the bold principles, like those laws and, and Keller Williams, my it's, it kind of gels right there. And so that's what I've implemented into my life balance. Like the lady that came on that's going to be from Houston. Like when after I got, uh, heard her that day, I was like, I'm just going to glue into her for a second. Like I was like, 
I felt like Iron Man. How was that again? Or, or the mask with Jim Carrey. You guys should go no, watch that. No, oh. don't watch that. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just watch the mask when he puts on the mask. Okay. All right. So, Mac, you've been doing this since 18. So that's four years. I'm about. in my fifth year. Yeah. Okay. So you're in your fifth year. Frazier, you've been here since 2020. Yeah, it feels like just a year. So, so. so three years. So how many times have you guys attended Bold in your respective five and three years of Kelly? This is this will be my third one that I'm taking. Okay. Great. Yeah, this will be my third. Your third. So you've yeah. taken it every year. Yeah. Remember, okay. I did that one virtually or whatever, but they were like, hey, just sign up. I they did it for free for that yeah. first time. But now not anymore. They said you're so good, we're gonna charge you. Okay. Um, so, I like that. <laughs> so three times for each of you. You're clearly top producers. You don't need any help getting business. So why do you keep well that's not true? <laughs> yeah, so the I think trying to wrap your head around coming up with money to take bold is sometimes difficult for for people depending on circumstances of where you are. Um, what I've what I've realized from my experience is, you know, bold is what is is it seven ninety nine everybody seven ninety nine so it's eight hundred dollars okay it's eight hundred bucks the average the average mission check. Let's just say is eight thousand, maybe nine, depending on the what you know where you're selling most of your homes. Bold was that bold is responsible for, the, I would say last year it was responsible for about fifteen of my transactions. I would say, you know, eighty, and then I mean that's you do the math. <laughs> fifteen transactions at eight thousand dollars a pop was that one hundred twenty grand. Is that result that is right math <laughs> right so 120,000 because the because of what bold held me accountable to with my database and other aspects of my business if i can attribute those transactions to bold why would i not invest $800 into that program that's going to hold my feet to the fire and if you look at the people who have signed up right now for the next bold probably all of them are okay you've signed up okay yeah. I would say majority of them are in high production. Mm -hmm. And what does that tell you? Well, if those are high production are already busy, they've already got life. The same excuse as a lot of us have. Life is busy. My kids are starting school. I've got a second career. I've got all these things. Well, you know, we're all busy in life. We all have things. Um, you know, you can't afford not to do it. If you buy a Starbucks once a day, that's $100 a month. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's three twenty-seven for that one. You know, it's a hundred dollars a month. Bold is seven classes. Yeah. Over a two-month, month and a half period, seven-week period. Italian rest. If you can invest in your Starbucks, if you can invest in your Netflix, that's giving you zero return. Why can you not invest in the business that's going to allow you to own a Starbucks or to own stock in Netflix? So this past last month. That I just transmitted. So for June, our average sales price was like it was over three hundred thousand. But for the year right now, we're at like year to date, our average sale price is around like two hundred and forty. So it's a little bit lower. Um, but if you do two forty times your three percent, that all of you should be taking. Um, and then let's assume that you're not capped, so you're getting sixty four percent of that. So that gets you a little under five grand per transaction. The average agent is doing 11 transactions. Mac just said he did 15 from bold last year. Um, but if you multiply it by your 11 transactions, that's 50 grand that you're taking home. That's after your cap. That's after everything. So. And that's Madison, by the way, everyone. Yes. Hey, everyone. The one who's talking about your commissions is the one who pays them. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know. like, I'm just saying, yeah, maybe Mac's right. If, you, if your mindset is, I can't afford the $7.99 right now. My argument would be you can't afford the 50 grand that you're not going to get if you don't do this. Yeah. You, you can't afford to lose that. Yeah. It's so not worth it. I have a question. Can you tell me a little bit about what bold entails? What, what we'll exactly? get that's not a question okay. here. We'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you guys have kind of rolled into my next question, which is, is it really worth the $800? And it sounds like it is. I mean, if we're averaging 11 transactions when 96 or 92% of agents nationally only do four or less, 
you know, you're averaging 11 coming out of bold in seven weeks. That's a return yeah. on investment of 50 grand. And for perspective two. on the 11, it's not just like, hey, the best producers that have ever done bold are getting 11 transactions. Like that's actually the average, which includes the people who do nothing. Yeah. Um, and that is what they've gotten from all of their bold classes since 2009. And that's the average. So out of everybody who's taken it since 2009, put them all together and divide it among everyone. That's 11 transactions. So like, it's, it, you know, like yeah. that's a big deal. It, it, it really isn't. And Madison is 100% right. It's 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 hard to think that you can get there uh, until you've done it and experienced it. Uh, so, yeah, so the value is just tremendous. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so kind of playing off of RJ's question, which was my next one anyways, what is your favorite part of actually attending the program? It's seven weeks, so it's once a week on Thursdays for what, six hours a day, six nine, or nine seven? To thirty, yeah. Yeah, so six hours. So you're only spending six hours with our, our bold coach, Vache, which if you haven't heard her speak, she'll speak again at our team meeting next Wednesday. Um, and she's amazing. We have a call with her every, every week as leadership and she just rolls into it. And every time she talks, I just want to do everything she tells me to. Um, so I don't even know if it's been added to your list or not that I have, but I know. How um, but so what's your favorite part of attending? What does the program entail that you guys love so much? Great. Gosh, I guess coming out of my comfort zone, I don't like it, but I like it, you know, because I mean, it, it encourages you to, I mean, I like the, the team format because there's you're, you're at a table with, it should be strangers that you have to work with, you know, so it's a collaborative effort to, I think, come up with ideas. Um, but I like the fact that I come out of there with um, a little more energy than I had before going into it, <clears throat> just to look at things differently. So what does coming out of your comfort zone, like when you say that, with like making calls? Yeah, having to make phone calls. Yeah. So I mean, which I've done a thousand times, but... I'll do it right now here in front of you, but sometimes it's when you're by yourself to certain people, you know. Yeah, I think uh, I'm a structured kind of person, you know, the military, the law enforcement and all that. This bold is extremely structured. You're at a, you're at a, a table with five to seven people. There's accountability among your, you're a team. You come up with team names and you're accountable to one another. Every week you go in, you report your numbers, the calls you made, transactions, listing appointments you went on, buyer appointments you got. Uh, and then it's a tally for the team, really competitive. I like the competitive nature of it. Uh, and it's, it is so structured and it holds your feet to the fire where it's intense. But on the flip side of that coin, it's so rewarding at the end of the day because you're just proving to yourself every day that if you just do the right things, you will get results. And, but it's, it's, I'm telling you, it, it's not like you're sitting in our market center here at these tables and just having conversations and then you get up and leave. It's not that. It's legit mindset structured. And I like the structured aspect. It's of interactive. It. So you guys have work that you have to do when you're. Oh, yeah. There's homework. You have yeah. a workbook. Unfortunately. You have the calls you make. You have the, the work in the book that you have to do. Uh, there's presentations. There's a lot of, Every time you go to bold, it's always it's always updated with what they're giving you. I love home and information. So I could do it all day. Uh, it, it and there's a lot of other elements to it. Um, you may find things that are more rewarding for you. So, so we talk a lot about how bold is about mindset rather than about business, right? So we've heard that in leadership. We try to tell all of y'all that. Why do you think it's about mindset more than it's about business? Somehow this has gone. I was going first. But now it's him. I'm waiting on you. Well, I mean, it's about positive energy, right? About getting your mind right to uh, assume the sale and get the sale. It reminds me a lot of family reunion out in California, you know, or the Keller Williams um, charge the storm mentality, you know, because if, if I've got a, if I have, I, I know I say it all the time, but if I have a positive mindset and set the intention that I'm going to do something, I'll, I'll go do it. But, and that's what bold is, you know, um, I think Nicole said we have a um an abundance mindset. What is it there? It's not a is there scarcity. 
Yeah, she was like, we don't have a small mindset here. When she said that to me in my office one day, I was like, that a bold has a lot to do with that. You know, I was like, I was like, it's like, you're damn right. And I was like, I'm going to get these sales and I'm not going to fall to the side like some other realtors. I was like, I'm, I'm worth it. I'm good. You know, and bold has a lot of that juice and electricity. Yeah. Yeah, no, the mindset is critical. I think it's just critical in life in general. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I hear people all the time. I think we all hear people who who sometimes want to play victim to just society things, societal things, right? This happened to me in my life. Therefore, I can't do this. This has happened. Therefore, I can't do this or that. At the end of the day, if you have the ability to think for yourself, then you have the ability to set the mindset to do whatever you want to do. I ran into an agent, uh, was with another brokerage. Tried to recruit this agent here, didn't come. Ran into this agent at a car dealership last week. They said they just couldn't, they just felt like they couldn't sell. And now they're selling cars at a car dealership and they haven't sold one yet, but they really want to sell. But this person said, I don't think I can sell homes. Well, that's because their mindset's wrong. They clearly want to be in sales. They just haven't told themselves they could do it and they just haven't done the things required to do it. Some, some of us have had quicker success than others. I had a, I had a big sphere of people I could reach out to. That, and I came in the industry at a pretty hot time. This is a difficult time to come in the industry. So if some people are struggling a little bit, then, then that's actually the normal trend for agents that come into the industry. You struggle your first year or two. But unless you invest in yourself with things like bold, bold is probably the most important one you could go to that's hands-on, mindset driven and so structured. You can't get up from your table and just go get on the phone for two hours and meander. It's so structured. Um, if you are struggling, you think you need that mindset, you can't afford not to go, not attend bold. You just can't, plus you get free lunch. I think the other thing too to take into consideration is that you know Mac Mac as he comes into this business has a background of dealing with people, and um, he also has a uh, a degree in was it social work like as a counselor counseling yeah. counseling, and I had already you know my I guess my son is uh he he's fifteen so I got into the car business probably. 15 plus years ago and they put me through training Dale Carnegie and I say that a lot so I had all this back this this the sales background and mentality like I know how to I can handle any personality mean cowboy you know country cowboy uh city slicker whatever you want to be but the thing is is if you do not have a sales background right or you ha don't have this background like these police officers do well you know, Norm Poland was in, the, I guess, the medical field or whatever he dealt with, had to deal with people. But if you go to Bold, it will teach you how to handle the phone calls and make the calls and who to call and how to call them. I'd already had a, like a lot of that training when I go into Bold. I'm like, I've done that, done that, done this. I've done, okay, cool. Oh, I haven't done that. You know, so it gives me new ideas too. And um, I, that's why I think it's highly encouraged. But also too, if you're a part-time agent, you're a part-time agent. And I was for a while. It's really difficult to make head headwind, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought, I mean, you had mentioned, mentioned, we know we mentioned the people that are going to bold, right? You, you brought up Norm's name. So Norm is probably the top producer here, hands down, I would say right now is that latest numbers, right? I think he's around 50 houses for this year so far for the Norm Pullen team. And, and, and in run too. And, and, about it. and I'm not going to speak for him, but I'm going to tell you, he values, he understands investing in yourself. He's going the bold. Now, this is a guy that's doing 50 houses right now. We still have third, fourth quarter of this year to go into. He's super busy, like all of us are. We're doing broker stuff, selling, rent production, do all these things. If you can't, if you're listening today, and you think your life is so busy, you can't attend. Well, everybody's life is busy. I've got six kids, four in college. I'm doing the broker thing. I've got, you know, I'm in production. I do the military thing. I'm at VMI. <laughs> we all have busy lives. But if you're not in the right mindset that you can do this, then 
you know, you need to get there. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, so that actually kind of answers one of the questions I was going to ask, but I'm going to give a little context. So we've talked a lot about investing in yourself, right? The bold is investing in yourself. Going to trainings is investing in yourself. Uh, free trainings, paid trainings, what have you. So bold obviously is $800. Mm -hmm. You know, we've said that number a lot. We've talked about the 50 grand return on- I can't them. believe it's only yeah. $800. Well, and that's huge, right? So yeah. when do you start- deciding to invest in yourself. Like for me, $800 sounds scary, but I, if I know that I have a closing coming up in a couple of weeks, that's going to give me a $2,000 paycheck. Why not take the 800 out? When do I start investing in myself? Right. Uh, yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And if you're watching, if you don't know this, you can literally go see Madison or give her a call or, or give her. her a call or email her and say, Hey, look, every transaction I do this year, I want you to take $200 out of it or $50 or 500, whatever number it is, put this in, put it in a little training fund. She, she can do this. It's a little training bucket and it keeps gaining money and, and increasing in, 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 uh, how much you have in there. So then we need to in her office. Yeah. That's yellow. Yeah. You know, she had eight, she had those hundred dollars, right? She was flashing on uh, Facebook the other day. <laughs> she pulled that out of a bucket, I guess. I don't know. My point is sometimes $800 writing in a check is a hard pill to swallow. But if it's slowly taken out of your transactions over time, you don't miss it necessarily. And now all of a sudden when Bold comes up, Family Reunion comes up, Mega Camps come up, whatever it is, she pays for it. Yeah, we've got seven agents who've paid for their Bold in full already out of their commissions. And then I've got four who are on track to pay for them out of their commissions. So right. money that they're not even missing because it's never hit in their account. So one thing I, I want to bring to your attention to um, is that, you know, Mac had mentioned investing in yourself. You, you need to invest in yourself every day. And that's what Keller Williams is about. That's one of the reasons I'm here is that, you know, I, I read a positive book every day. Like I have a positive meditation I read every day. Um, and, you know, I've walked in past his office and he's listening to a podcast you know, just something small, five minutes, three minutes, journaling, writing, investing in yourself, and then bold will make sense to you. But if you're not investing in yourself all the time, then you're not going to have that, you know, that mindset. You're just going to be kind of flighty in real estate, you know, and you're going to hit or, hit or miss success. That's so with, true. With success. Good point. Okay. So I've only got two more questions left. One of them um, is still about bold. One of them, not really. Um, so we talk a lot about bold laws. If you've seen the poster in our office, or if you've heard us talk about it, or if you've seen them posted, oh, they're sure. like these tiny little um, blurbs, yeah. I guess, of information, tiny little, um, what do you call them? Like, uh, my, uh, quotes? Principles? No, like when you're laws. manifesting. Bold laws. <laughs> affirmation. Affirmation. They're kind of like affirmations. <laughs> So I want to ask you guys, which one is your favorite and why? You need a, a hint. So my favorite is life by design, not by default. I spent all those years not knowing kind of how uh, finances and life and how it's really supposed to work. I was led to believe you go to work, you check in, you check out, you get a check, you have some health insurance. The, the, the business, you know, you work for gives you less out the other, you go home and that's it. Right. Well, I was in that world, but what wasn't happening with me is I wasn't, I wasn't achieving things I wanted to achieve and I wasn't building a life that I wanted to build. I was literally working to build someone else's life. So when I was thinking about making that transition, you know, financially, you know, finances played into it. And I said, well, if I can do real estate, I know you can make good money in it because I've talked to Doug. I've talked to a couple other agents. So just to put it in perspective, I also wanted to have rental property. I wanted to, I wanted to have those things. <laughs> and I started listening to a podcast called Bigger Pockets early, early on when I first got my real estate license, trying to figure out how I wanted to navigate my life. Because guess what? As an adult, I don't care what has gone on in your life. You have 100% control every day of where you're going to be the next day. No doubt. You do. You may need help from others. 
you know, whatever that is, but you can literally forge your path. So in those four first four years, I'm in my fifth year, I went from having no rental property and making 42,000 a year to having 15 rental units and making more than $42,000 a year. So <laughs> life by design, not by default. I actually like what you said in there about how you were contributing to somebody else's life, right? When you yeah. were working in law enforcement. Isn't that what we tell our buyers? Why are you paying somebody else's mortgage? Yeah. Right? So kind of go hand in hand. I mean, I like my tenants to fund my life. <laughs> Keep renting. But I'm also providing housing to people who absolutely need it. So I feel like I am helping them in that, in that way. But uh, you've got to take ownership of where you are today and responsibility for where you either do or do not end up in life later. It's you look in the mirror and you have nobody but yourself to look at from where your circumstance is today to where it's gonna to be tomorrow, 100% ownership. And you start with investing in yourself and, and going out and getting your unfair share. Okay, so Frazier, do you do you have a favorite from- Yeah, Carnegie? there's so many good ones on here. <laughs> so um, Matt really likes when I talk about Dale Carnegie. One of their principles is don't criticize- Did you go to Dale Carnegie? Took Dale, took Dale Carnegie. Oh, you and, took Oh, you I took have course, sold, took sold the course. Did you bring it back? No, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> okay. But I do have part of his ashes. I have part of his ashes in a milkshake at home. In a milkshake. Yeah, so- um, I was I was on the radio, by the way, Mac. I was on eight. You got a face for radio. I know that's what I've been told. <laughs> Which I know is not I know is not true because I've been married nine times. Uh, <laughs> supermodels. Um, so, anyways, um, well, I was, when I was on the radio, I got to use my imagination for uh, blinds. If I was blind, my wife would be so not hot. you. They were blind. Yeah, if I was, but if you were blind, think about it. Your wife would be hot. Your house would be a mansion. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, so anyway, always you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I, I want to give my favorite principle. What's the ball? Whatever the hell it is. Um, so when I was on the radio, I got to use my imagination and my creativity to create different scenarios and bits. So I would talk in different voices and whatever. So I have this imagination thing. You know, it just goes in different places. Oh, so we know. You know. Sometimes I'll imagine you're a princess up here and I'm in a castle. But you get what you deserve in your imagination. So I'm reading a book right now. Um, that's it's got four words a page. It is. It's a children's book that I got in kindergarten. Um, and so <laughs> what if I imagined myself? What if I imagined myself being like a top agent or selling X amount of houses or imagine my name in lights or imagine a real estate sign that was colorful, blue and red and said, stay positive. And it was in a shit ton of yards. And what if that came true? So, you know, it, that's, that's would be one of my favorite uh, bowl laws. Great. I like it. <laughs> and you are a princess to me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm in a castle and I'm the king and he is um, the poor Jester. No, he is on patrol. He's taking out the bag. Does he want to come to the king? I'm the one selling the castle. <laughs> I'm retired. Okay. I have one more question for you guys. Um, I don't remember when it was mentioned, but apparently in bold, you write a letter to yourself that yeah. you get in a year, right? Uh -huh. So I'm not talking about- I just got it. You got the letter. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yes. 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 Um, so for those of you that don't know, at the end of bold or in the middle of bold, somewhere in bold, you write a letter to yourself that they send out to you. They actually stamp it, mail it, and it comes to you a year later. And it's all the, all the places that you want to be in a year and you can compare, you know, where were you last year? Where are you now? Did you hit those goals? Um, I want to know where do you guys see your career in five years? Go ahead, Frank. Well, I mean, I am so I, I have to um I have to come out come out of my comfort zone. So I just sold a house for this guy. And I've I firmly believe that you could call it God, you could call it your higher power, you could call it positive energy, whatever you want to call it. Um, he looked at me and he's he's a very successful doctor in Roanoke, and he said, You need to get your broker's license. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, no, not the test again. I was like, oh, no. I was like, no, because I don't want to take the test. He's like, you need to get it, Frazier. He goes, you're worth it. 
he goes, you, you could do this. He goes, just think about it. He goes, he goes, that's your next step. And I was like, oh, no. So, and I, and I, um, Jen says you can do it, Frazier. Thanks, Jen. I appreciate you. So anyways, I, I see myself, um, getting my broker's license and I see myself, uh, having a more developed team. Like everybody on my team works part-time right now, but, um, more, a little bit more upscale team. Um, and, um, I, um, it helping others, you know, and, and increasing my, um, savings. If I don't buy rental properties, like my savings is increasing. Um, and, uh, you know, just continuing to develop myself and become better and better and listen to smart people around me that, you know, I feel like Matt knows a little bit more than I do. And I might know more than him in other areas, but keep on you know, staying, staying that way and teach him more. I don't know. A lot has happened in a year uh, with me that I'm thankful for. Um, I think I do, I like, I like to be focused on my investment side of things and growing wealth through that. I'm very blessed to be in the position I am here and to be able to do the things I'm doing. But I think in five years, I would probably like my investment portfolio to move into the 10 million in asset range, okay. 10 to 12 million. That number makes me want to throw up, but okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, just over two million in the assets in the four years. All this stuff is possible, guys. Uh, they're I mean, they're all very possible. It's yeah. all possible. Everything your 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 dreams can come true in real estate. Yeah. Seriously, I mean, yeah. it's the real estate is the. I'm, I'm not gonna. I don't say the easiest way to grow wealth from a from an aspect of it's easy, but if you are going to grow wealth, real estate is the vehicle that can get you there the quickest. If if you have the right mindset, you're surrounding yourself with the right people, you're listening to the right podcasts that have the right resources. You, if you bring all of those things in your world and wrap your arms around them, there it's you can you can buy all these assets. You don't even use your money to do it, and you you get them. You know, there's so many ways to do it, but that's that's where I want to be because at the end of the day, I don't want the government. I don't want to be 63 or 60. I don't know. When do you get Social Security now? 67? 65. Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't want to be, I don't want to have to be looking at a calendar and basing where I am in life with, I just got to get that 62 years so the government can, can financially, so I have mailbox money. Now, I like mailbox money from my real estate investments. That's my mailbox money, right? That's my cash flow. But I'm, I'm, I'm earning that. I'm going after it. I don't want, I don't want to count on our, our government to be able to support. Because trust me, that's not going to support you. None of that's going to support you in life, everybody, if you're listening. None of that's going to give you a life that's going to allow you to do the things you want to do. It's going to keep you at a certain level in life, and it's going to limit you. It's going to limit your travel to go see your grandkids. It's going to limit all those things. Here's one thing to think about, too, is that you know, uh, in five years, I was thinking about this on the way over here today. It's like my sister both live in Wilmington. My sister, one sister cleans houses. And um, she's like, yeah, I ran into this guy that's getting ready to list his beach house. And I've already talked to the Keller Williams in Wilmington. Bye, Monica. Bye, Monica. Great to see you. Thanks for coming back. Um, anyways, I've talked to the <laughs> Keller Williams in Wilmington about getting my license and hooking up with them. So you know, you can get your real estate license in any state, right? It's like, it went, I was like, I passed the national shit. I can pass North Carolina. And what, I mean, and then I just, I, my imagination had it signed down in, in Wilmington. I was like, what if, what if one guy on the beach says, Hey, yeah, you can list my house 3.2, 4.2. And then I just hook up the team. I drive down there. I'm just saying that the possibilities can be pretty endless and I'm, and I'm game for it. I'm ready to sell until I can't stop selling. Imagine this. I've got a I've got a realtor friend not with our brokerage. Um, yeah, friends outside the brokerage. Yeah, she's not. She more Just more kidding. of a more of a colleague, not really necessarily a friend. But the conversation we had, we were doing a deal together, and she said, "Well, I'm going to be in Florida for the week. I'll come back, and it was something to do with the inspections." And I, I said, "Oh, what are you doing in Florida?" She goes, "Oh, well, I have my real estate license down in Orlando. 
So, and I have a townhouse down in Orlando. And I was like, oh, that's great. She goes, yeah, it's really great, Max. She goes, I bought the townhouse in the company because I have the business office there. So I bought it with, through the company. So it's a write-off, okay? It's a business investment. She goes, so I just take my family with me when I go there for the week. They go down there, they enjoy whatever, and they go to the beach, do whatever. And I do some real estate sales while I'm there. And we take the hop, you take that hop from Roanoke there, because uh, I don't know what airline it is where it's $49 and $99 from Roanoke, Orlando, Allegiant, round trip, Allegiant, 99 trip. One week a month. She's got a real estate license down there. Her entire travel is all a tax write off. In the townhouse she has, there's an investment, so you get all the tax benefits. Speaking of write off, can I write off bold? Yes, you can write off bold on your taxes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Most anything you do in your business, you can write off. So, yeah. It's in the right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, okay. yes, five years, more wealth. Okay. It is 1152. So, I am going to cut it there because we have the Age of Virtual Summit coming up at noon. If you don't know what that is, it is in a calendar email Emma sent you with a Zoom registration link. So, you guys can hop on. We're also streaming it in the 104 conference room um, on the TV. So if you happen to stop by, we'll have it up. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming to sit. Yeah, thank um, you for um, for joining us. Today. Such a great host. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really. Thank you. I really feel like Vanna White. Do you have a princess so, for a host today? Yeah, we had a princess <laughs> in a castle that he's telling that is mine, which I'm grateful for. You know, so, I can take over the universe. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> if you don't know, Katie was also supposed to sit on this panel, but she cracked a tooth last night. So wish her well. She's at the dentist right now getting that fixed. Yeah, everybody you. send her a text to say we hope her teeth are better. Yeah, the tooth fairy came to see Katie last night and bought her $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys so Thanks, much. Thanks, Jen. Thank you all for being here. Excited about bold Yeah, it's good.